Fill her up. You're listening to the Gas Digital Network. Conceive, believe, achieve. Shut the f*** up. <laughs> You're listening to Believe You Me with Michael the Count Bisbing. You know my name yet? And Anthony Lionheart Smith. Welcome to the Believe You Me podcast, everyone. And I am joined by UFC 298, victorious Anthony Fluffy Hernandez. Fluffy, what is going on, brother? What's up, brother? How you doing? I just finished SNC and now I'm ready to go to wrestling and some fit ins and back to work. <laughs> Straight back into it, eh? No rest for the wicked. No, it's it's easier for me just to stay in the groove because once I start off, it's it's like hard to get back on track. You know what I mean? So it's just better for me to stay in it until I retire, I feel like. So you've been chipping away, and well done, by the way, on the work ethic. That's Thank unbelievable. You. A lot of people take some time off in between fights and go and get fat. Uh, you're not tempted to do that? No, I'll get fat easily. I just, just change my diet, you know what I mean? That's why I got the fluffy name. The weight comes easy, so I got to keep working it. <laughs> yeah, because you started off at heavyweight, right? Yeah, no, when I was like 15, 16, I was fighting like uh, local pros and shit at smoker events and stuff, fighting heavyweight, fighting just grown-ass men my entire life. So like, I don't give a f*** who I fight, you know what I mean? That's, it's helped a lot. <laughs> it's just like, since I was a kid, I've been taking on grown men, and I, it's just, it is what it is. It's just a fight, you know what I mean? Worst case, I have to start all over. <laughs> Anthony, listen, um, I'm not just saying this because you're on it. I've got so much respect for you. I mean, the way that you fight... Um, I'm going to choose my words carefully, but you kind of remind me of myself in a way, because I was never the strongest, never the quickest, never the, you know, and never, never the best athlete. And don't say that as a sign of disrespect, because no, it's not no. what I mean. But, yeah. you, but, but you find a way to win, man. You know, I mean, I'll never forget when you choked out Rodolfo Vieira, you didn't even know who that guy was, right? When you fought him yeah. and time after time, this is what you're doing. What do you want now? Is it a five, five win streak? Five, five now. Yeah. Yep, five fun streak right now. Um, yeah, so far it's going great. Um, but dude, I appreciate that. That means a lot coming from the a champ. You know what I mean? Um, the goal is to be in the seat where you're at and have a great retirement. And just, you know what I mean? Um, yeah. But I'll rest when when it's over. But for now, it looks like 40s, like where kind of people are starting to teeter off. You know what I mean? So if I can take mm -hmm. care of my body and be smart, I want to get the title, make a bunch of freaking money, and. Like that's the my goal at the end of the day, and just living the cuts and be left alone. That's, that's how, old, how old are you now, Fluffy? I'm just looking at the fight card. I should have done I'm, this before, but you no, jumped you on <laughs> a few <laughs> minutes early. I mean, you are prompt, you're dedicated, and you're even showing up to the podcast early. How old are you, Fluffy? I'm 30. I'm oh, dude, you got loads of time. Yeah. No, I, I, man, I, I thought when I was like 25, I was like, I'm going to come in here, clean up shop, got humbled a couple of times, you know what I mean? And then that was just approach it the right way and don't fight hurt. I learned they're not, you're not like doing anyone a favor if you fight hurt, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like I, there was a time when I just, I needed money to get out of a trailer. I was living like a 26 foot trailer. Um, I was hurt still. And I was like, well, it's the best I can do right now. And I, I just sent it. And uh, I'm not taking anything away from anyone. I got my ass whooped when I got my ass whooped, but uh uh, being healthy, I mean, I've shown what I can do when I'm healthy and I'm fully dialed in. It took me a while to, like, uh, get over my dad's death and my, my grandmother's death. They were, like, super close to me, you know what I mean? But uh, as a man now, I feel like I'm ready. I'm taking care of my shit. Um, everything's kind of falling into place. Um, so I just, I feel like I just needed that growing up to do, you know what I mean? Um, now I have my shit together and I'm, I'm ready to change these kids' life. When did your father pass away? Man, it's been like right for the contender series. Honestly, he uh, died right before that fight camp. And honestly, that the contender series, I was like, it's probably one of my worst fight camps. Uh, but I got a 40 second knockout. I was drunk every day at practice, super high all the time. Just trying not to think about the shit. You know what I mean? I was like hella yeah. depressed. I lost my best friend, basically. Um, but I'm good now. And now it's just like put in the work and like everything that he, my dad did with me and for me, it's just repay it. And I said, this is the only way I can repay it is by winning. You know what I mean? So you're going to have to kill me to try to get me to lose in the cage. Cause this is like, I got a lot riding on it. You know what I mean? <laughs> hey, listen, we have seen that people do have to kill you to finish here. Then my God, it's unbelievable. Sorry to harp on, uh, on, on, on about your father. Uh, do you mind no, if I ask how we passed away? Because obviously I'm 45 next week. I'm getting on and I've got parents <laughs> and they're all, I, I, I worry about that all the time. Um, yeah. How did your father pass? Man. Uh, so he got like, um, he was a diesel mechanic and like just smelling all kinds of bad fumes up his lungs. And they went to do a biopsy. And when they went to cut a piece of lung, it broke off and like brittle. So like just 
bunch of fluid and shit filled up and then basically like all the fluid filled up and like stopped his lungs and then he got put into a coma and then he wasn't waking up a couple of my uncles and aunts were doctors and i was like all right give it to me real like what's the what's 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 going on and they said uh basically because he was unconscious for like 45 minutes that like usually they can't they're not going to come back and my Mm -hmm. dad told me like he almost died when i was a kid once and he always told me if i'm going to be vegetable you pull the plug you don't let me just die and i'm like respect i'd want the same thing i'd shoot myself if i was stuck in a bed you know what i mean um so i did as he said and um the rest is history but yeah yeah, basically like uh fluid stopped his lungs basically from uh Lung disease. I don't even remember the word. It's some big ass doctor word. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm not the smartest guy. You know what I mean? So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, well, me and you both, buddy. Me and you both. Well, listen, I was, I was, I guarantee if he was here now, he would be so proud of you, man, because what you're doing is phenomenal. Saturday night was a big spotlight for you. I mean, opening up a massive pay per view like that. I mean, your profile must have grown recently. I, I, have you kind of felt that? It grew a little bit. Um, I, I probably should do a lot more social media shit. I like, honestly, I don't even like doing interviews. Usually I've been telling a lot of people like, Hey, sorry. No, no, thank you. But obviously you're a legend. I'm going to talk to you. And then, uh, I just met, was it Ariel Juan the other day for the first time? Um, didn't really know who he was. He's cool. Seemed cool. Um, but yeah, I'm not really into social media. If I, if I could just chill, kick it and just raise my kids i'm happy you know what i mean the rest is just extra i had my time to shine when i was younger and dumb but i don't know now it's kind of like i'm trying to be somewhat of a good inspiration for my daughters you know i I got little girls now i'm like i remember how i was so i'm trying to be straight edge you know what i mean (laughs) (laughs) not straight too straight edge um Hey, look, listen, never mind the, the social media bullshit because it is just bullshit. It's just a distraction. It's not important at the end of the day. It sounds like you've got your priorities straight. All that matters is your family, your kids, providing for them like your father did for you. So, yeah, you're doing the right thing. Let me ask you, was Helwani asking questions, trying to get you to shit on the UFC? No, no, he wasn't. Uh, he wasn't. He was just kind of asking my story because he find it, like, uh, intriguing that I didn't really know who he was. But the way I see it, like, I hardly watch fighting. The last thing I'm going to do is go look up people's interviews. I really don't give a f- what no one's doing. You know what I mean? Like, the only thing I care about is getting the belt and changing my kids' lives in my life. Besides mm-hmm. that, it's like, I really, like, I don't, I don't really care. You know what I mean? It's just yeah. focus on what I'm focused on and being happy, and that's all I really need. You know what I mean? Well, well, uh, you should do interviews because you're very good at them. You're good to talk to. Uh, and you mentioned Thank your story. You. That's Tell us a little bit about your story, Anthony. How did you end up fighting and who? where did Fluffy – I know it's because you were heavier. <laughs> but but yeah. fat, Because you were fat. Hey, bro, you should have seen me when I was younger. My God. Uh, but, yeah, tell us a little bit about your background and what got you into fighting. Man, uh when we first started fighting, it was like those cheap little Denios gloves, lace-ups that the cotton falls, you know, it moves around when you're hitting each other. And it was like, we'd fight in front yards in high school and shit. We would just beat the fuck out of each other and like slam each other into cars. Uh, at my high school, they used to fight in the locker room. It was wild. Uh, I never fought at the high school because it was just boxing. But um, I did like MMA front yard fights with my friends. And then my cousin's like, dude, check out this gym. I went to the gym, started training fell in love with the sport and then like when i was like 15 i pretty much met max griffin and he's been me up for a very long time when i was a kid um and basically like that's kind of how i just stayed in the gym since i was 15 tried to do in college didn't work out very well my teacher was like why don't you quit fighting so you can actually do your homework and i'm like first of all i'm retarded when it comes to school i'm gonna definitely just drop out so i dropped out Took a uh, like a fight with a 36 year old cop, knocked him out in 30 seconds, and then made my MMA debut, and just went with it. And I've, I've been in the gym ever since, just chasing the same dream. <laughs> hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, back up. You knocked a cop out. I'm assuming that was in like a proper tournament f- tournament format. No, that no, wasn't it was on that, the street. Yeah, yeah, no, 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 no. So I got. <laughs> Invited to go do some. Training. It's only people that can beat up cops these days are immigrants in New York. If you if you beat up <laughs> cops in New York, you're fine. Outside of that, you might go to prison. Dude, no, for sure, for sure. But it was like a dude. So I went to go do some. What I was told was sparring, but I I filled in for Max, uh, pro like a fight, and I didn't know that. I showed up with my dad and my sister, and um, they ended up mid me out and cornering me, <laughs> and I, my dad had to sign a waiver because I was still 17 at the time. Um, so my dad signed the waiver and then 
me and the cop got to fight that night and I knocked him out and then I was just like, well, this shit's fun. That, that right. pretty much settles it. I'm going to go ahead and drop out of college. <laughs> it's not a and bad way just, to start, is it? Knocking out a cop. Nothing against no, cops. Cops do a great service, by the way. That sounded weird. <laughs> uh, but the knockout, you know what I mean? Because that's the, you know, and, and submissions, of course. Finishing no, another sure. man. That must have been such a rush as a young man. You're like, of course I want to do this. Dude. Yeah, and I just got a ticket that week, so it worked out perfect. <laughs> I mean, like, it was that. You took out all your frustrations that. on that guy. For sure. <laughs> For sure. Brilliant. So so let's talk about this fight. Roman Kopolov. I mean, I'm looking at your record now. Roman Kopolov, that's a big win because he was soaring. He was looking like a really hot prospect. He, he is a hot prospect. Oh, yeah. Edmund Shabazian, same thing. Mark andre Barrio, he's, he's having a good career. Josh Friend, and before that, Rodolfo Vieira, a man that's so highly regarded in the jiu-jitsu world. Saturday night, Roman Kopolov, he's known for his striking. He's also a Russian that's an international master of sports. So they they can wrestle. Talk us through the fight from your perspective. Yeah, I just I just found out he was like a five time Sambo champion uh, yeah. yesterday. I was like, oh shit, that's dope. <laughs> um, but no, yeah, the dude was he was really quick. Um, I knew he was gonna run away and skate to the power side. Like we, he shows that every fight. Um, he's really good when he went forward. Um, as you seen, he kicked the shit out of me and hit me. <laughs> but uh, <clears throat> um, the goal was just to get him backwards. I do my best work when I'm in people's faces and I'm, I'm walking you down. Um, cause I, like I said, I trust my defense and I, tr I know what like shots I have available to me now. So um, the goal was to stay in his face, uh, hit him a lot, and then hopefully that would open the wrestling. Um, I knew he had a, a shitty gas tank just because every time he throws shots, if you watch his diaphragm, he takes a deep ass breath in circles. Um, so it was just a matter of making him have to fight his ass off and making it make him that nervous energy jump and just staying in his face and slowly slowly chipping at him um i knew he had only one way to beat me it was kickboxing so as long as my defense and all my shit was there in the right place i was going to be fine um and it was just keeping that that elbow in front so he can kick my elbow instead of my liver you know what i mean yeah uh, yeah little adjustments little adjustments <laughs> so it sounds like you did a lot of homework on this guy Dude, I'm telling you, my coaches, they do the, they do a lot of the homework. I honestly don't have to do no thinking. They do me like, I trust them with my life. I've been training with these guys and for a very long time now. Um, I know they're like jealous schoolgirls. you know what I mean? Like they'll look in there and figure out every tendency these guys have. And then they'll let me know. And I'll watch a couple of times, see how they come out. If they come out crazy, then it's like, all right, we got to fight off the gates. You know what I mean? Or yeah. we kind of like get a just slow approach, but Dude, I, my team is so good at doing their homework and shit, um, which is like, I just have the right people around me and I'm a hard worker, so it, it usually works out, you know what I mean? And I'm not yeah. the dumbest person. I understand the shit. Uh, sometimes I get hit, I get pissed off. I'm like, F you bitch, come on. And that's like, <laughs> my. I just want to go but kickboxing days on the, you know what I mean? But uh, I got to be smart and stay very well-rounded. Thank you. Yeah. Guessing. Well, 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 you certainly do seem smart. You seem to have a really good, solid grasp of the fight game. And, you know, you're going to be a good thinker in there. So you're going to be a smart man. You know, I know you're talking at school and stuff. Your grades and whatnot weren't the best, but you no, know what I mean? You're clearly a smart individual. Talk to me about that finish because you were trying to get that rear naked choke. He was defending you on the chin. You were trying to get a neck crank. And then you got it sunk in and you're staring down Mario Lopez, just giving him yeah. the biggest old cheesy grin. Dude, no, yeah, it was dope because he's hella cool i've been talking to him now like here and there every once in a while and he's just like he's super into boxing he's super into jiu-jitsu he just seems like a solid ass person you know what i mean and to see him going hella crazy for me like when i had the when i had that shit and i knew it was under his chin i was like oh got him so to, you know like i got i don't talk shit when i fight or like leading up to fights like, it's, it's all respect in here in the game but yeah. like when we're face to face and we're fighting i'm gonna for sure talk shit because it's the, the game of war you know what i mean if i can mentally like with you and piss you off and get you off track, then it's just going to buy into my favor. So I feel like at least, and I got a did hard you, head. So. <laughs> did, did, did you get a chance to speak to him after? I tried throughout the week and shit, but he didn't speak no English. <laughs> so like every time I'd say something to him, I'm like, oh yeah. <laughs> just, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> <laughs> but I think so, yeah, so, so you're a fake like, Mexican. Dude, I'm definitely super. Yeah, yeah, no, definitely. My Spanish <laughs> sucks dick too, because they're like, "Can you do Spanish interviews?" I'm like, "Dude, everyone around me is white. Like, my dad's yeah, from yeah. Mexico, but he talked English to me my whole life. You know what I mean? Like, uh, yeah, we're, yeah. we came here for the American dream." <laughs>
Exactly, exactly. <laughs> and it seems like it's going well for you. This week at Mexico City, big fight card down there. Was there any talk of you being on that as opposed to the pay-per-view? Uh, Hopefully not, because that's hella altitude, right? <laughs> oh, yeah. 7,300 <laughs> feet, something like that. Then hopefully they don't call. <laughs> yeah, no. yeah, no, no, for sure. That because that changes everything. I would have to go down there for like a month and shit, and like mm. I don't think realistically. I just want to do like Vegas is cool because it's close. Um, if I if I can fight close and like, dude, I gotta look into the taxes and all that shit too nowadays, which is crazy to me. Because <laughs> when I fought in China, I like, dude, it was I had to give up half my check, and I made more in Brazil when I lost than I won in China. When I won on China, so I was like, what the. Um, so I definitely got to look into all that shit too. Um, but I would love to fight in Vegas. If they came to Sacramento, I could sell that bitch out because I'm from out here. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. That would be so sick. But, um, I've heard of like, I've heard people saying they want to see me fight in the sphere in Vegas with Mexico independence day. I'm yeah. down for that. You know what I mean? Um, I want to get back to work. Uh, I want to see what they throw at me. I want a test that's going to prove like I'm ready for my title run. You know what I mean? I don't know who that is or who i gotta fight for that but uh i'm ready i'm healthy so definitely yeah i told mick already too i seen him in the elevator and i was like hey just keep me in mind you know what i mean <laughs> so we, we gotta ask who, who's the name right i'm looking at the rankings here you are ranked currently 13 that might go up a, a notch or two above you it's paul craig roman delidze jack hermanson nazardim imavov i think it'd be <laughs> one of those guys next right um, I would think so. Last time they they offered me, Im, Im, uh, Imad, the, the French Vav. guy, the French guy. Yeah. 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 So uh, I said yes in Paris, and then he said no. So I don't know. Um, I don't yeah. think he's afraid of me or anything. Probably bad timing or whatever the. F um, so Jack Hermanson just had a great win. He's a veteran. I would love to fight him just off like the style. Mm. You know what I mean? He's six four, or he's a tall, lanky guy. But uh, I think, honestly, I think in the kickboxing, I could just, I could do very well against Who did him. he just beat? Hermanson just had a good win. Who was? Oh, Joe Pfeiffer. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And that did just stud too. You know what I mean? I want to fight yeah. someone who's winning and like who's who's on his way too. Um, I just, I want to beat someone that's, uh, anyone. I mean, I'll fight someone uh, even like ahead of, I fought Allen. I beat him in LFA. He's gotten way better, obviously. He's doing fantastic things he's yeah. been healthy he's been healthy so he's able to fight you know what i mean like if i could fight someone ahead of him to prove it i would love that um or because i know he's got to fight sometime soon right Bre Bre brendan uh, allen is currently number six and you mentioned it there that was your last win right before you signed with the ufc yeah yeah and um i know he says he had a bad camp for that fight camp <laughs> so did i i honestly didn't train for that fight um, I was hurt, so I just jogged, and it was like, my manager's like, bro, this is the opportunity, you need to take it. So I was like, well, I'm just going to try to jog and get in the best shape I can and fight him. You know what I mean? I, yeah, I went out there and I won it. Um, but definitely, I mean, I would love to fight him and us be both at our best. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, or yeah. someone ahead of him, I really don't give a f I just, I'm, I think... I'm ready to prove to anyone that I'm ready for the belt. You know what I mean? I feel like I'm very well rounded. I understand the game very well. I understand my game very well. And I understand like how like the other attacks and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, I'm just, I'm just ready for whenever yeah. making them want to see me, who they want to test me against. I'll be ready. Just give me some time. You know what I mean? I'm sure that you're going to get a big opponent next because even though you're not big on the social media and stuff like that, generally uh, you open the pay-per-view. That's a really, really good spotlight. I'm telling you. So a lot of people today know exactly who you are and they're impressed with the performance and everything that you showed. Uh, Harrington is our producer on here. So he did a little, he sent me a couple of little notes, even though I've got notes on you for days from when I've commentated <laughs> you. One of the things that he, that he put in here, he has chickens living at his house. <laughs> dude, yeah, I got some little minis inside. They're bad. Out. Things like a dog, dude. I wake up in the morning. He's like running back and forth across his cage. I'll let him out, and he'll like want to go outside. And I'll I'll take him for walks outside. I'll tell him to come inside, and he'll come in the house and put himself away. He's how many out. chickens? Just the one? I got four inside right now. My wife's not very happy about it, but <laughs> hold on, hold on. Inside? Yeah, they're in like a small little square cage. They're. All right, okay. So they're not running okay. free because I'm looking like, no, well, no, no, do they not no. shit everywhere? Yeah, they, no, all that. Yeah, no, definitely. <laughs> they do shit. I'm like, I got to have a napkin on hand when they walk around because they're definitely going to shit. You know what I mean? And my wife will freak the f out. <laughs>
My wife wants to get chicken. She wants to get the eggs and stuff. So are you raising eggs and stuff? I mean, they're like, I'm trying to breed them eventually and just like sell them and shit. But uh, when I used to live on the ranch, I had chickens for eggs and like I used to kill our own shit, kill our pigs, kill like stuff like that. Oh, just organic's the best way to go. You know what I mean? Um, I hate the city. I'm living in it now because I need to get my kids into a house and shit. But I plan on going back to the country and like having my animals again and just doing the natural garden and like that's just just peaceful to me and it keeps me off social media and not thinking about the negative bullshit you know what i mean and that's like I all do. i really need right now that's i know exactly I what you say it sounds like you got it all figured out man because i i i, I still live in california i'm in orange county and mm -hmm. uh that's what we want to do i've spoke about it a couple of times on the show my wife is obsessed with moving out to the country and doing all the same stuff that you're doing there growing her own produce having animals and all the rest of it so you're doing the right thing man you are doing the right thing for four girls is it dude no i got two boys and four uh two girls two boys okay. two girls super lucky with that the boys i'm like oh cool easy you know what i mean but the little girls i'm like ah do the why? boys want to fight no, nah, my son's a puss. <laughs> my daughter wants to fight. <laughs> <laughs> my son's a pussy. <laughs> yeah. I, bro, I tell them that shit all the time. Like, dude, you guys got to start doing yard work or some shit. Like, we need yeah. to go up. Dude, you guys are pussies. Both my boys are way, or my girls are tougher than my boys. Like, my son has his moments. He'll nut up. You know what I mean? But, like, yeah. with training and shit, now he's not about it. He can fight. I'll give him that. Little shit How old is he? He's uh six or yeah six or no 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 I'm tripping he's seven gonna be eight. Um, yeah, he's a baby man. He's a baby but, because I, I've got a forty uh, thirty. He's almost fourteen and <laughs> same thing. He was not interested whatsoever. And then um, he walked into an MMA gym one day because there's this young lad that I'm kind of like mentoring in the fight world. Uh -huh. So I went into the gym to check on him. And Lucas came with me and he walked in and he saw it all and he wanted to train. And now he's he absolutely loves it. He's tapping people out. He's oh, fuck, kicking yeah. me in the fucking head. So <laughs> you never know. There's, he yeah. did. We, we were standing outside a restaurant and I was with my buddy. We were waiting for our table. And I said, here, show him your kick. Right. And you probably know this eye doesn't work. So he, he kicks my hands. He kicks my hands. And then I stopped. But he threw a third and he went, whoosh, kicked oh, me right fuck. in the face. And it was a good one. I'm like, look, you little shit. He's like, oh, sorry, dad. I didn't know. So he got a good one in. Um, uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it, so, so four kids. You've got your hands full, man. No, yeah. With kids' sports and shit, like, bro, I don't have a life no more. Like, that's all right. You know what I mean? Partying with shit. I did all that when I was, like, 15. I'm cool off partying and shit. Uh, now it's just live for the kids. But my daughter does gymnastics, my oldest. And she's in the gym, like, probably six times a week, four hours of session. And, like, she's putting in work. Um, mm -hmm. She said she wants to be Olympian. So I'm like, well, you stay in the gym then. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yep, yep, um, yeah, of course. And then... My other one, my the one below that, he wants to do soccer. So same with him. I'm like, bro, you better get out the goddamn games and start running and stay in shape. And you know what I mean? Um, and then my other one, my son, the younger one, the middle one, he's doing gymnastics. He's down to fight. I've seen him getting into fights with kid, like with kids and shit. You gotta piss him off. But once he gets mad, he he can throw like box a little bit and throw head kicks and shit. He understands grappling well too. And then my he's baby He's got those my, Hernandez jeans, man. Come on, he's <laughs> yeah. got it. It's it's in there. Yeah. It's in the it's bloodline. In so, but my youngest wants to be a fighter and she's oh. six. Uh she just pinned her first boy the other day. Um oh, nice. she's been doing good though. She's like been able to get up from everyone in wrestling. Um I had to like tell her she can't choke kids though and shit. And she's like, what? That's not fighting. I'm like, baby, you're just doing one part of wrestling right now. But let's get good yeah. at wrestling and then we'll work on striking and shit. But her, her main goal is to beat up her brother. That's a year older than her, like two years older than her. So did, did, did the kids get into it? Cause like in my house growing up, I was always getting the shit kicked out of me by my older Dude. brothers and then my sisters and my younger brother, they were always scrapping. What about those guys? They like, Every once in a while, their mom used to like they're they're terrified of their mom because she used to like dabble in fighting a little bit too. <laughs> and, oh uh, man, the yeah, household, dude. No, yeah. So like, if if they like bullshit and stuff, then we'll be like, all right, you know, if you guys got to settle this shit, we'll make them put the like, put the gloves on and fight. Like we've had them do that before to settle their differences, and uh, it worked. You know what I mean? Uh, they quit arguing and quit bickering and shit. Yeah. Like they just you gotta find that that line you know what i mean <laughs> no i i, I completely uh, agree and, and, that, and that's good i mean because this new generation is growing up soft and it's like they're oh, falling yeah. out settle yeah. it like that and and then yeah, they'll no. resolve their differences properly yeah well no, done yeah 
Yeah, I think that's the best way to figure out who you are. You know what I mean? Is by mm. fighting somebody, you learn a lot about yourself. You either a bitch and you don't fight, or you and you use your words. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Basically. Well, you definitely do fight, brother. I'll tell you that, and I'm looking forward to your future because you got a very bright one. I'm telling you. Uh, you so much, man. I know you not you don't watch the fights a lot, uh, so I won't ask you your pick for this weekend at Mexico City. But Drickers Duplessy, he fought Sean Strickland. A yep. Who, how did, did you watch that fight? I did watch that fight. Yeah. Yeah. Um, he, he looked like what he got picked apart with a jab. Uh, it shows you that like Strickland has done a great job of what he does with the most basic combinations ever. You know what I mean? And it just it like really just shows you that good basics and fundamentals will fucking get you there. You should be able yeah. to beat anyone with a jab, ideally. Yeah. But like Strickland shows that shit every fight um i would love to fight him one day you know what i mean i met him at the uh apex or the yeah the apex once and i was like well if i see you in there i see you in there like he, i honestly think i'd get along with the guy he seems funny mm -hmm. as shit you know what i mean like <laughs> <laughs> um but uh no yeah i've seen that fight um duplessis mixed it up well i think he's wrestled and like he just looks like a big strong you know what i mean but i think yeah. the same most of these 85ers gas out and i think that's where my advantage is is making these work their ass off and then um it, taking exploiting it and taking advantage of it so, so i want to ask you about that because i used my i weaponized my cardio right because yeah. as i said i wasn't necessarily the best at anything but i was a good all-rounder you know what i mean but i yeah. would work my ass off because you know you know money was extremely tight growing up and i wanted yeah. a good life and this was my only path to do it so i worked yeah. and i worked and I, and I ran and if i whatever i was doing i was pushing myself to the absolute limit and people used to say to me oh what's your secret how do you get your cardio so good it's like there ain't no secret it's just hard work is yeah. that kind of just the same attitude because for me i knew if i was fighting someone as soon as they start getting tired then they start making mistakes and then that's where i'm going to take off it might be hard yep. at the beginning the first minute oh, the second sure. minute the third minute <laughs> but can you keep up this pace bitch can you yeah. keep going yep. at this pace because i oh. fucking can Dude, yeah no that's my favorite thing is when i see that i'm like ah, i got you bitch <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> i got you bitch yep no, I definitely there. I love that shit. You know what I mean? But I work so hard every day that there's no reason I should gas out when I'm going balls to the wall for 45 minutes a roll. Yeah. You know what I mean? And sometimes it takes 30 minutes for me to get caught, but it's like, okay, that's still longer than a fight, first of all. Um, but um, yeah, no, I go, I go hard as like you said. There's no secret. Every session yeah. I do, I push my ass off, um, and like. As you know, as you get older, it's like you got to train less and use your use your brain more. You know what I mean? Your body can't push like crazy like how it used to. Um, and I had to find that out the hard way, just being hella exhausted and be like, what the f I'm not young no more. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yeah, exactly. Like two exactly. sessions a day, one session a day, one hard one, and then let's do a brain one the next session or whatever it is. But my coaches are fantastic and they, they have a good schedule for me and I just I trust them fully and yep. don't worry about the rest. You know what I mean? All right, final question. Time. I wasn't going to ask you about this, and I was going to say goodbye now, but then just as you turn to the side, just just look to your left. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the ears. We got we got to talk about these ears, man, because you cover them up, right? What do you call it? No, not not the cauliflower oh, gauges, ears. The gauges. The, the gauges. gauges yeah. The gauge. We got to talk about this because you you cover them up when you're fighting because when you take those out, I mean that seems like a nightmare for a finger yeah, to get caught fucking, in. There. The one over here just ripped. That's why the gauge isn't in. The back ripped during fight week that shit sucked it was painful but what are you gonna do you know what i mean Fry, my dumb ass should have done it in the first place what's but, the score with the gauges i don't know i just was bored one day i did them like and then it hurt like a bitch and then me and my cousin started doing it to see who was tougher you know what i mean like who could take more pain type shit yeah. and yeah. i just never untook them out because that shit hurt so bad to do i'm like i'm leaving them you know what i mean like oh, I was shit. A, we were just dumb asses growing up seeing who proven who was tougher and that's kind of how i got those things <laughs> No, so, no, and I'm genuinely curious. So if you took those out and if you just, if you decide, and by the way, there's no judgment, yeah. but if you decided I'm done with the gauges, what would happen? Will, will you forever have like a little a hole or, or some kind shit. of slow? Will, will it kind of like this? It's kind of closing up. You know what I mean? That's I, think closing up. I think it'd close enough. You know, probably go yeah. back to normal. Probably yeah, for sure yeah. go back to normal. Okay, I didn't go okay. crazy big for that reason. Cause I think once you go like crazy, stupid big, like there's no point in. So, Someone's supposed to go through that shit. You know what I mean? 
I'm not trying to do all that. No, 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 this no. This is like perfect. Just enough where I can put a little logo or some bullshit. You know what I mean? I'm good. Oh, nice, that. nice. See, see, you're thinking all the time. Advertisement. Uh, yep. Fluffy, congratulations again, man. All the best with everything. Can't wait for your next fight. Thank you for your time today. And I'll see yeah. you soon, man. No, thank you. And I'll see you soon, brother. You have a good one. Big fan. Take care. There he is. Anthony Fluffy Hernandez. Today's episode is sponsored by Prize Picks, who are the largest independently owned daily fantasy sports platform in North America. And the easiest and the most exciting way to play is just you against the numbers instead of battling out against thousands of other players, including professionals and sharks. It's just you against the numbers. You pick more or less. OK, it really is that simple. You can 25x your money this football or basketball season. By the way, Prize Picks offers weekly promotions also that can lead to big payouts like Attack or Tuesday. Price Picks also offers Apple Pay for quick and easy deposits into your account this football season. Now, what am I talking about? Well, for example, for you basketball fans out there, Luka Doncic, okay, will he get over or under 31.5 points this week? And then Jalen Brown, over or under 20 points? It really is that easy. Even a simpleton like me understands it. And I do struggle with uh, daily fantasy sports, but this is really easy. As I say, you can 25x your money uh, and they do offer quick and easy payouts via Apple Pay. So what more do you want? I mean, come on, right? Whether it's UFC, NFL, basketball, over or under, more or less, just that's what you're going to do. You make that pick and off you pop, you're off to the races. So go to prizepicks.com slash believe, use the code believe, and you'll get a deposit match of up to $100. Prizepicks.com slash believe, the code is believe for a deposit match of up to $100. Sprinkle, you know, have a little wager. Have a little fun. It makes the game or the fight or whatever it is that you're watching way more engaging. And of course, as I say, with prizepicks.com slash believe, you can 25x your money. All right, so Anthony Fluffy Hernandez, what a guy, Harrington. Dude, he is the man. I saw him, uh, I saw I just saw him doing a bunch of interviews this week. And my first thought was that guy belongs on BYM. He is just grit, determination, and trying to do right by his family. I love Fluffy Hernandez. I tell you what, Brian's gonna have his work cut out, bleeping all the F bombs and stuff like that, <laughs> but he is the best in the business. Um Lots going on in the world of mixed martial arts this weekend. Of course, we do have UFC Mexico City going down. Yair Rodriguez, Brian Ortega, and then Brandon Moreno once again fighting Brandon Royval. The battle of the Brandons. Um, you know, I saw a crazy stat the other day. Since Ortega last fought, we've had the rise and the debut of Alex Pereira. He, it, Alex Pereira was not in the UFC. Uh, last time Brian Ortega fought. He, since then, Pereira's fought seven or eight times. He's beaten four champions. He's been a champion in two weight divisions since <laughs> Brian Ortega last fought. That is wild. And Brian Ortega's back, and he says that it is the rebirth. It's the rebirth. And he likened it to an eagle. Uh, he said an eagle lives for 70 years. Um, at year 40, around about 40 years old, its beak is all blunt, its talons are blunt, its feathers start falling out, so it flies off to some majestic little cove, sits there, rips its talons off, plucks itself, rips its beak off, waits for it all to grow back, and then it can go back into the wild. Reborn, rebirthed, rebirthed, uh, hard as fuck, sharp as a talon. I'm ready to rip some heads off dick to dick and nipple to nipple. Do you know <laughs> what I mean? I thought that was great, but I didn't know that eagles live for 70 years. Yeah, I had no idea. They are they are truly an incredible bird. Man, what is that you're drinking? But this, oh, don't worry about it. This is uh, Magic Mind. Magic mind. It's delicious, actually. It's um, yeah. it's one of those, uh, you know, everyone's talking about mushrooms and stuff these days and clarity and focus. And God knows I need a little bit of that. Uh, and it's definitely helping. I looked it up online. This has got vitamin C, ashwagandha, cordyceps, lion's mane, all kinds of goodness. And it tastes absolutely bloody delicious. So, you know, I'm going to be locked in. My mental clarity is going to be off the chain. I mean, that interview with Anthony Hernandez, award winning. OK, and it's all down to my magic mind. OK, so anyway. <laughs> Damn, they're going to have to catch you for PD is in broadcasting. You're, you're, you're yeah, too focused. Exactly. Uh, anyway, anyway, uh, Brian Ortega. Brian Ortega versus Yaya Rodriguez. You know, last time Ortega took some time off, he lost to Max Holloway and then mm -hmm. didn't return for about two years. Came back 
uh, fought in Abu Dhabi. I forget who it was against now. Chang Sung Jung, the, the Korean zombie. And he looked like a different fighter. He looked reborn, right? He looked like an eagle coming out of the mountains, okay? He did. His, his boxing was the best it had ever been. And so we don't know what version of Brian Ortega we're going to get again because two years away, and he's talking about this rebirth big time. Hold on. It is delicious as well. Um, uh, he's talking about being reborn. So what does that mean when you're going up against Yaya Rodriguez? Does it mean he's going to be spinning around like some capoeira master, right? <laughs> because Brian Ortega is known for the jujitsu. Stick to what you're good at, Mr. Ortega, right? Don't try and go toe-to-toe -to -toe and, and spin for spin with Yaya Rodriguez. Yeah, I mean, you know, that maybe that is it, right? Maybe it's like the 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 eagle comes back and it's like, oh no, I'm I'm still the badass I was, you know, when I was a 20-year-old eagle, right? And I'm gonna show you by using all those same moves. So it's like maybe we're back to T City and, and and a slick guillotine submission. We need to think of some more eagle comparisons. Ooh, uh, I got one. He's bold. He's there gonna you go. change head like a bold eagle. <laughs> what kind of eagles do we have? Well, what golden. Golden. Oh, he's looking for a golden performance. Oh, that's Ooh. bad. That's bad. <laughs> uh, what kind of eagles is there? I should call Rebecca. And she's the expert on birds. That's all she does in the garden right? this, this morning. Like, I just walked out there a second ago to use the bathroom. She's sitting there staring at the birds in the cage. Uh, and in the garden, she has like, she's like Mary Poppins. She puts all like the nuts out and stuff. They've got ferrets, there's squirrels, there's rabbits, there's crows. We can't, we're spending a bloody fortune feeding these wild animals and they're all getting very impatient, right? I swear to God, they all sit there waiting for her in the morning, all these animals and 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 the, the, the crows get aggressive. They're like, oh God, they're like, Give me my peanuts is what they're saying in crow language. <laughs> I'm like, babe, we can't budget in bloody, you know, this amount of peanuts. No wonder we haven't had Anthony Smith on lately. I've had, <laughs> I've had to cut him off. I've had to cut Anthony off because of the peanuts. I can't afford him anymore. That's a joke, by the way. Anthony is back on Monday. Um, What's I, your I, love that, I love that you're Rocky and you have a real life Adrian who just wants to care for the birds at home. <laughs> That's all she cares about. That's yeah. all she cares about. In fact, all she's been going on about, because remember a few weeks ago, one of the birds got attacked right, by mm -hmm. a hawk outside. So now uh, the birds have been inside the whole time. And she's worried about the birds. She's worried about their mental health. I'm worried about my mental health because <laughs> I'm going to string these, ring these birds' neck, right? I'm telling you, because all they do, <laughs> sit the dogs on them. Yeah, that's been done before. Um, <laughs> Harry brought one in, didn't he? Headless. Uh, so she's looking for a screen and all the rest of it. We're trying to figure out a way we can put the birds outside without the hawks attacking. If anybody knows in the comment section, the best thing to do, we've bought a panel, like a, a, a fake wall. Anyway, nobody came here to hear that. Uh, Brian Ortega, Yaya Rodriguez, my pick, my choice for that, because I'm not commentating. I can't make a pick. I'm kind of leaning towards... Brian Ortega, but I think Yaya Rod. I, I think on paper when I assess the skills, I think Brian Ortega. But for some reason, I think with it being Mexico City and the kind of nastiness that Yaya Rodriguez has, that kind of flips me, and I, I find it hard to pick against him. Let's remember Brian Ortega. So so Yaya Rodriguez in Mexico City, that man gets nasty. I walked into the Octagon last time, if you recall, to interview him after he. I poked Jeremy Stevens by accident. He almost attacked me. The crowd went crazy, flinging Modelo's at us and stuff like that. Brendan Fitzgerald hit under the fence. Anyway, my pick's Yair. What you got? Uh, yeah, look, I, I, I'd love to disagree with you just to, to make it interesting, but I think... I think Yair Rodriguez is setting up something special with Ilya Taboria, right? That's just, that's where my brain goes. He, he was talking about, you know, it, it, it doesn't need to be in a cage. I just want to mess that guy up. Like, yeah, good job. You went and did what you said you were going to do, but this is like, it's on site. I will just start fighting you if yeah. I see you in a training center. He really wants it, Ilya Taboria. The only thing standing in front of him is Brian Ortega. And it's a guy who he's got a win over. Granted, Ortega did get hurt, but you know, like all things equal, you walked into a cage against Brian Ortega. You walked out with your hand raised, you know, like that has to give you so much confidence, especially now fighting him at altitude in your backyard. What is the beef with Ilya Taporia? And you're right, because Yair and Ortega fought before. Yair was declared the winner because of Ortega's shoulder injury. That's just the way it works, kind of like Tom Aspinall and Curtis Blades. Um, so, so realistically, 
it's a win, but it isn't necessarily a proper win, you know what I mean, in the records. Uh, but what's going on with Ilya and Yair? Why so much venom between them two? Any idea? So I think it, it all stemmed from when Ilya said that, you know, those guys might as well retire because I'm not going to give them a title shot. I, I feel like he kind of took that one personally, where it's like, you you didn't fight me on your way up, so you can't deny me once you're there, you know? Yeah, yeah. He's saying it's on site. He's saying when he sees him, he can't wait to get his effing hands on him. Uh, it seems like there's a bit more to it than that. You know what I mean? Somebody says what Ilya said, so, you know, I'm not going to give him a title fight. That would maybe cause a bit of mocking, accusations of ducking, but I wouldn't necessarily think that that would have you fuming where you're going to attack the guy if you see him. I don't, I don't know. I mean, I want to I, I want to look more into this, but I haven't I haven't seen anything where where Ilya is coming at Yair personally. But I just I know that Yair was very vocal uh, the moment that dropped and really started this like you know I I I don't like Ilya Taporia campaign. <laughs> Well, I put a tweet out yesterday asking what the beef was all about, and Elon Musk screwed us over. Because yeah. have you not noticed on Twitter these days, X, uh, you put a tweet and you have to leave the app open. It, if you if you go off to another app, it doesn't update in the background. It doesn't continue to work. It do, not on my phone anyway. Wow. I have to have it there, and sometimes it takes a while. I gotta get. I guarantee if it's not Elon, if it's not X, it's the bloody Apple people. Forcing me to buy a new phone, the bastards. How uh, how old is the phone? Because you get about I think two it's a years 13. now. It's a thirteen. Yeah. You're due. Oh God, it sucks. I want to do it. <laughs> they do do that, the bastards. Everything starts slowing down. Oh, Brian, yeah. what's the conspiracy? There's going to be a conspiracy there. Well, it's pretty obvious. The conspiracy is that Apple wants to use can't carry on spending money and making them billions and billions of dollars worldwide. It's a global conspiracy, Brian. Yeah, you nailed it. No, no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Um, so and then in the I, main event, Brandon Moreno versus you had something to add. No, I, I just looked. Uh, I, I just looked it up. He Yair said that he respects everybody except this guy, uh, meaning Ilya Tapori. He says he's talking too much shit. He's lying. Uh, you know, with, with his marketing, calling out Conor McGregor and Canelo Alvarez. You know, you'll never stand in front of those people. Why are you just marketing? I just don't respect that. Okay, fair enough. And he's probably got a point. I don't think he'll ever fight McGregor. I don't think he'll ever fight uh, Canelo Alvarez, but you got to set your stall high. I mean, Elia Tapori is going to be a massive star. I didn't see it. You put it in the, in the notes, the video of the homecoming that he got in Spain, right? Can we take a look at that, Brian? Oh, look at this. This is awesome. Wow. Look at that, dude. Let me see the turnout when the camera gets in there. The whole airport is full. That's literally everyone. You got press. You got. This happens every time now, doesn't it? It's it's great to see because he truly it. deserves it. He's representing Spain. Of course, he's Georgian as well, but he's putting Spain on the map when it comes to mixed martial arts. Um, and you see it every time. I think Valentina Shevchenko got it. Drikis Duplessis got it. I mean, everyone gets it. It's 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 amazing. It's amazing what a global phenomenon the sport really is now. You know, you got Chinese champions, Kyrgyzstan, Dagestan, uh, where else? Japan. We got Brazil. We got South America, of course. Russians. I mean, all parts of the globe now are covered with high-level talent. What are you smirking at? I'm just, look, I might be a little bit biased, but I'll tell you right now, uh, come the middle of next month, I think Ecuador, the entire country is going to shut down for like three days if Marlon Cheeto Vera shows up with that belt. Oh, God, could you imagine? Cheeto, let's get Jason Perillo on the show next week. I'm going to reach out. I would love to hear from Perillo. I'm not going to bother Cheeto. He's three weeks out from a big title fight, so I don't want to drain his energy. In fact, bollocks to it. I'm going to get Cheeto on. Uh, main event, Moreno versus Roy Val. This is a rematch. First fight went down. Moreno got the stoppage, if I believe, right at the end of round one, uh, chipping away with loads of hammer fists. The ref stopped it, but Roy Val... Yeah, I think he had an injured shoulder as well. Uh, so the main and the co-main rematches with injured shoulders being the reason why the fight stopped. But I do think the hammer fists uh, were the reason. I've got Moreno in this. I think he's improved so much since that first fight. I was watching that first fight yesterday and 
He, sw he was swinging and looping his punches, a little reckless. Now, if you look at Moreno, the boxing's so tight. It's crisp. He's got big power. Of course, uh, he took the back many times in that first fight. He does that fantastically. Against Pantoja, he was able to avoid submissions. He got back to his feet. He's got great wrestling. He's better than ever. It'll be a fun fight because Roy Vald is capable of pulling off something crazy. You know, he is very opportunistic if there's if Moreno makes a mistake and leaves an opportunity for Royval to take a submission or even land a big knee or something like that he'll take it but I think unless something like that happens Brandon Moreno gets the victory and is one step closer to a rematch with Pantoja yeah I mean I it is tough when that first fight ended so decisively and Moreno like Moreno got it done on a fight where, you know, Figueredo's on that same card. Either guy is is looking to win that fight to call out, you know, the champion who's fighting in in at the the top of the card. Um and he got the quick turnaround a month later to go fight for a title. He took the most, he made the most of that opportunity and and you know, I mean both guys were at the same point. Either one could have jumped up and become a champion. Brandon Moreno goes on that four fight run. Uh essentially, I think cements himself as a a place in the UFC Hall of Fame with that series of fight with Davis and Figueredo. So, to me, Having that as your journey versus Brandon Roy Val being on the on the on the losing end of that, like you know, he did get his title shot and he came up short once again. I can't see Brandon Moreno losing to this guy. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, and that's the main and co-main event this weekend. I think I'm going to do a live on my mm. YouTube channel for the main card. If you guys are around or around and want to jump on, feel free. Uh, but best of luck to everybody competing at altitude. I saw Aaron Bronsetter yesterday. I don't know if this was. Uh, a purposeful move by the UFC. But Aaron Bronstetter, great journalist out of Canada, of course, said there's no heavyweights on this fight card because of the altitude. He said they didn't, <laughs> the UFC didn't want two out-of-shape heavyweights flailing about or something like that. I'm paraphrasing. but um, So I looked at the fight card, and the heaviest weight classes that they have is lightweight. So it's definitely a showcase for the smaller ladies and gentlemen. So, uh, yeah, best of luck to everyone competing this weekend. Harrington, I'm going to ask for a non-MMA story. We're not going to do number five. England's uh -huh. NHS has declared that milk produced by trans women with drugs compared to that produced following the birth of a baby. We're not talking about trans, We're okay? We're not doing it. We're not doing, We're not it. doing it. We're not doing it. That's going to upset somebody. Do you know what <laughs> I mean? <laughs> I'm here by the skin of my teeth. Um, I say we talk about Elon Musk wanting to populate Mars. Okay, uh, so he's he had a plan. Uh, he keeps he, the the dates keep shifting around and moving, but he's right now is saying that the the under current um, you know the developments that uh, SpaceX is making, he says that the Starship that they're building uh, will be able uh, to get up to one million people to Mars by 2029. Uh, he says that it's a it's a massive test in, you know, like a, for humanity as a whole to survive as a species uh, to be to break the restrictions of just one planet. Right. Once we can mm -hmm. inhabit and populate uh, two different planets without needing supplies from one or the other, if you can just create a fully sustained uh, com colony like on another planet, then man will have jumped into the next level of, of human evolution, essentially. Mm. No, it's really interesting fascinating uh i don't know too much about intergalactic travel uh but i do know that the fate of humanity probably does depend on something like this let's be honest because at some point life on earth will be done not the human race so sorry not not life in general i mean the human race will come to an end there will be some natural disaster in the world will get too hot because of climate change or because of the just stop oil people throwing powdered orange dust all over everybody no but seriously all, all jokes aside something's going to happen right whether it be a hundred years or a million years at some point there will be an asteroid hit the planet or something like that or some crazy flood or something that goes on five billion years the sun's going to eat the earth so we have that long well mass. yeah five five billion years is a long time i mean i'm all for forward thinking <laughs> you know what i mean but five billion years I'm just saying yeah, it's the yeah, hard, yeah. It's the hard countdown. Rebecca said, when I told her about this story, the first thing that Rebecca said was, oh, great, so we get to go and destroy another planet. We should just stay here. I'm like, no, not at all. 
we 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 need to pr pr preserve the human race. If we're doing a lot of effort to you know protect the bees and stuff like that, which are important, let me tell you, they are the source of life. But if we're doing that, we need to protect the humans as well. Um, yeah. We're a virus. Just, uh, we're a virus. We have to spread to survive. That's that's what humanity is. That's that's you know that's how we're gonna uh, keep this population going. All right, the Matrix. Get the. <laughs> Out of here. <laughs> I had I, I had a little thought one day. It's like you know, because you think about the universe and you know the endless amount of planets and solar systems and suns. And it's it's just endless, you know. It's like it's like, do you think, we're like little bacteria on the Earth, just yeah, it up. You, you know, when you think of things in like a cosmic scale and how small you really are, it's kind of scary. Yeah. You know what I We're mean? We're just tiny little bacteria poisoning the earth. Uh, what was I going to say? I had a good point, but it's gone. It can't have been that good. Uh, oh, 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 no, no, no. There's a, what is he? An astrophysicist, astrologist. What's his name? He was the lead singer of D-Ream, um, an English like 90s dance band. What's Brian his Cox? Name? Brian Cox. Have you heard his stuff? Yeah. Yeah, he's yeah, a very, very smart man. Brian Cox is awesome. I love yeah. listening to him. And he he's was talking about... The singer. This is the first I'm hearing of that. Oh, no, I think he was the keyboardist. Okay. Or something like that. Yeah, but he was in like a 90s pop group he called He was a rock star for a little bit. He was a rock star. I'm not a rock star. He was on the dance floor popping pills. Yeah. Um, but he was saying that if you think about it, human life is so important because as of right now, there's only us that has consciousness if we are alone, truly. And we're the only living thing in the universe that knows. And, and, the, and the earth is the only living place uh, or the only place where earth, uh, life can live right now. I mean, it's when you think of it like that, it blows your mind. Yeah, it's pretty scary, right? Like, uh, I don't know. From what I understand, we're not traveling the speed of light anytime soon. So, no, uh, we're, we're not. Pretty much I don't stuck think we here. are. But that flight from Mars, from to Mars, from Earth, you're saying it's going to be like a regular commercial flight, Harrington. That's what Elon right. says. He says it's going to be as normalized as international flights are. Yeah, it's a pain in the ass, but it's not the end of the world. Yeah, that sounds like a bitch of a flight. Listen, I bitch going to Singapore. That's a 17-hour <laughs> and 10-minute flight. That's bad. If you've never done a 17-hour flight, it's a bitch, okay? So going you're to Mars for a three-year flight? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You'd have to go into hypersleep. Hypersleep or what did he call it in Aliens? Is it cryosleep in Aliens? Cryosleep. There's all sorts cryo of Cryosleep, hibernation, God knows. Should we get off the topic and so talk this is saying about? This is saying seven months. Oh, just a cheeky seven-month flight. I mean, to go to another planet? Think about that when you were a kid. I tell you what, if I'm on a plane for seven months <laughs> and the, 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 the staff on there are as rude as they are on American Airlines and the food they serve is the utter <laughs> shit that they serve at American Airlines, there's going to be a problem. In fact, on planes these days, there's, it's kicking off left, right, and center. Imagine being cooped up on a flight for seven months. Granted, I, I'm assuming you can walk around and stuff like that and there'll be a cinema and there'll be a gym and stuff <laughs> like that. Uh, but, but if it's anything like the airlines, seven months, no way. Not for me, buddy. Oh, man. Speaking of airlines, you want to get into that now? I'll go on then. Why not? I mean, it makes so much damn sense. This is this is one of the crazier things I've ever seen. It was a flight from Albuquerque to Chicago. Uh, not too long into the flight, uh, some dude just about lost it um, and went for the emergency exit. He ended up having to be tackled by passengers on the plane uh, and eventually restrained with duct tape. Uh, the the pilot came on the thing. He's like, thanks to you know somebody messing with the with the instrumentation, we're gonna have to turn around. Flight turns around right back to Albuquerque. I mean, look at this though. He's legit trying to open the door. And there's all the passengers for the audio listeners. All the passengers restraining him, pulling him back. You need five guys. five guys to make a good burger. Very expensive <laughs> burger, though. Very expensive. Um what on earth? I mean, that guy's trying to commit suicide and trying yeah, to take everybody on the plane with him. Got to be. Right. I mean, that's he looks pretty out of it. Like it could just be in a drunken stupor. You're you're confused and depressed and you go for it. I don't know. What if he just took nah. his annex and has no idea what he's doing? 
Yeah, well, I don't know about a Xanax, but you can freak out and, and not know where you are. Yeah. I've done that on flights a few times. I remember I landed in Brazil. I was commentating, and we were all waiting in line to go to customs. And some of the UFC staff are like, are you okay, Mike? No, like, yeah, I'm fine. They went, are you sure? I'm like, yeah, I'm totally fine. What are you talking about? They said, you don't remember standing up and screaming your head off at the top of your voice on the phone. And I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah, good one, good one. Good. And like, no, you did. Seriously. And I was like, are you serious? Oh, my. And I had no idea. I had no idea. But I just had my knee replacement, and I was on a lot of medication at the time. Uh, and I'm talking hardcore medication. Do you know what I mean? So that might have had something to do with it. But, yeah, who knows? I don't know if he was doing the same thing. But getting drunk – and trying to kill everyone on a plane, that is not going to fly. That's not an answer. All right, let's talk about buy optimizers, okay? Did you know that there's one phase of sleep that almost everybody fails to get enough of? And this one phase of sleep is responsible for most of your body's daily rejuvenation, repair, controlling hunger and weight loss, hormones, boosting your energy and more. Yes, I am talking about deep sleep. And if you don't get enough, you'll probably always struggle with cravings a slow metabolism, premature aging, or even worse. Why don't people get enough of this one most important phase of sleep? Well, a big reason is a deficiency in magnesium because over 80% of the population is deficient in magnesium. And magnesium increases GABA, which encourages relaxation on a cellular level, which is critical for sleep. Magnesium also plays a key role in regulating your body's stress response system. And those with magnesium deficiency usually have higher anxiety and stress levels, which negatively impact sleep as well. Now, listen, before you go out and buy any uh, magnesium, it's important to understand that most products, they only have one or two forms of magnesium when the reality is your body needs all seven forms, okay? That is why I recommend Magnesium Breakthrough. I fell into this trap because I saw all the rage. Everyone's talking about magnesium online. If you follow certain pages like I do, all these doctors talking about how important it is. So I went and bought some, and it was the wrong kind. I bought some other one. It was the wrong kind again. Well, Magnesium Breakthrough has all seven forms of magnesium to, designed to help you calm your mind fall asleep, stay asleep, wake up refreshed. And I'm telling you, you're going to have some wild dreams as well. The sleep benefits are very noticeable. Go to buyoptimizers.com slash BYM to get the magnesium breakthrough that you need. By the way, you will also get a free gift this month with your purchase. So one more time, buyoptimizers.com slash BYM. You're going to sleep great. You're going to feel better. You're going to go off to dreamland and you get all the magnesium that you need. Buyoptimizers.com slash BYM. Anyway, good little segue Harrington but let's get back into some mixed martial arts news you guys sent this in the chat earlier Francis Ngannou looks like he'll be making his return to mixed martial arts in the PFL of course who he's contracted to uh, and taking on the winner between Ryan Bader and Henan Ferreira uh, they're fighting for the PFL heavyweight belt I've heard of Ryan Bader I had to look up Henan Ferreira I'm not talking shit about the PFL but I looked it up He's had a lot of fights in the PFL. He's six foot eight. He's a big dude. And, and Garnu's going to fight the winner of those. But I'd never heard of him at all. Had you heard of him? Were you familiar with his work? I'm sure he's a great fighter. No disrespect to him. I mean, I'm familiar with his work in the sense that I'm a degenerate who's watching the PFL on Friday night. So, um, yeah, I did see the uh, I, I saw his heavyweight title fight. I think I had him actually picked against Gusklov or, or the, the gentleman who he was fighting in the heavyweight tournament. Um, you know, and he was like it was like a 50 50 fight, you know, and it kind of played out uh, pretty similar to that. Like, you know, you I don't know. Um, I think Ryan Bader is in theory, should not have much trouble with this, setting up a, a Bader versus Ngannou fight, which maybe that's the whole reason they got Bellator. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So so, so from what you're saying, that it looks like that Ryan Bader should have a relatively easy night's nice work at the office against Ferreira. So therefore, down the line, we may see Ryan Bader versus Francis Ngannou in mixed martial arts. First of all, he's got to get through Anthony Joshua. What's the date on that fight? I am excited for that one, to be honest, given what Ngannou did against Fran uh, Tyson Fury, right? Shocked the bloody world. If he can go out there and just even have, again, a competitive fight against 
Anthony Joshua. That will be mind blowing, but I think it will also show. I was going to say the disparity between boxers and mixed martial artists isn't as bad, but you can't really take credit for Ngannou for his work. But I think more than anything, it shows that this generation of heavyweights isn't that good, right? Mm. Ngannou almost beat Tyson Fury, right? Outside of that, who who did who was he fighting? You know what I mean? Who was it? Um, I forget the name. Derek Chisora a bunch yeah. of times. You know, and the, the, some great fighters, Otto Valin, of course. Uh, but if he can go out and beat Anthony Joshua, that is just going to be ridiculous. Yeah, that would be absolutely massive. And I mean, it's like, you know, for me, the the big thing about Joshua, I, I just keep going back to the Ruiz fight. You know what I mean? Like if, if Andy Ruiz was able to find your off switch, there is no doubt in my mind Francis Ngannou could find your off switch. So it's oh, without like, question. Without question, if if uh, Ruiz can do it, then so can Engano. Uh, and I think for Engano now, he's going to come into this one even more confident because think about it: you're going into a fight against a boxer like Tyson Fury, where you're a mixed martial artist, right? Where they all say you don't hit as hard, you're not as fast. Engano wasn't known for whilst being an absolutely destructive powerhouse, not being a cardio machine. You know, right. can you go? Granted, it was ten rounds, not twelve rounds. But he went 10 rounds, no problem. So he shouldn't be able to go 12 rounds. So he's had that question answered. The question of can he take the kind of power that these boxers deliver, that's been answered. Does he have the power in himself to hurt these boxers? That's been answered as well. Does he have the skill to compete? Yes, that has been answered as well. So for Ngannou coming into this one, a lot of the unknowns have already been answered with an affirmative yes. So I think that's going to give him even more confidence coming into that because you've got all these unknown questions, as I say, you know, and that can cause a bit of doubt, a bit of anxiety, cause you to not have the output that you would like to, could cause the kind of performance like he had with Derek Lewis, if you know what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. uh, but he didn't. He went out there and he let loose. So I, I think Ngannou is going to show up when that fight happens even more dangerous. When is that? March 17th? March 8th. March 8th, around the corner. Mm -hmm. What's your pick in that? Um, I mean, I'm going to look I, for you to say Nganu is going to come in more confident. I find that hard to believe, given just how confident Nganu was heading into the Fury fight. He told all of us, right? I am going to hurt this man. Like, I can beat this guy. And Damn. none of us believed it, right? It, there was a reason France Nganu came into that fight as a 10 to 1 or 20 to 1 underdog, whatever the whatever the insane number was. There is no doubt in my mind France Ngannou believes he can win this fight. There's no doubt. Like, I already think Tyson Fury is a better opponent than, I mean, the, the two best guys who Anthony Joshua fought is Alexander Usyk, right? Those are the two best fights on his record. He lost both of those fights, right? He's fighting those same guys, the, 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 the Otto Waylands and the, you know, Jermaine Franklins. That's not. Francis Ngannou. That's not the 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 level caliber of opponent. Simply because of like he put Tyson Fury on his butt. You were gearing up. You had this whole Riyadh season thing set up to go and fight Deontay Wilder, who's also not Tyson Fury, who's not on that level. Francis Ngannou is the toughest test in front of Anthony Joshua, and I, I don't know. I think he gets it done. Wow, wow. I mean, wouldn't that be something? And fair play to him, making a lot of money, a sensational amount. And if he's victorious, he's fighting the PFL. They're gonna. They're, they're, they're going to pay him well for that, you know. I mean, I don't know what he's getting for the Joshua fight. It's going to be somewhere around the 20 million mark. Here's a segue for you. Khabib Namagomedov was given 20 million by uh, Vladimir Putin. Dana was talking on a podcast this week, and do we have the video of that? He went on like this tour of all the Muslim countries. So he's he's going into Turkey. He's going into Saudi Arabia. He's going to Abu Dhabi. He's going over to Dubai, and they're raining on him. I mean, he didn't even make it back to his dressing room after the fight and Putin was on the phone and Putin gave him and his father like $20 million worth of property in, in, in Russia. Um, then he went into, you know, the Muslim territories where these guys are just cars, money, what gyms, whatever, whatever he wanted. So once you get to that level, it's, it's, it's like what we're dealing with with Conor McCormick. Unreal. Unreal. Hey, and fair play to him. That's amazing to see. Uh, $20 million in property. And he probably got so many gifts, as Dana said, there in other countries. There's a gym in, where is it? I think it's Dubai, Khabib's gym. If you look it up online, it looks absolutely phenomenal. You know, so that's incredible. I went to Dubai 
I was given a little, given a little gift. I was given a, a Rolex by the Sheikh of Dubai. I was, I was, I was happy with that. Never mind twenty million. It's one of my most prized possessions from my fight career because it's got such a cool story. I was in Dubai. I was out there doing some UFC gym business, and my hotel room phone goes, and he says, uh, "Sir, this is uh, the hotel manager. Uh, you need to come down to the front desk." I'm like, I'm sitting there in my underpants, you know, looking at my phone in bed. I'm like, what do you mean? I said, I'm in bed. He said, sir, you have to come down to the, there's a very important man here to see you. And I recommend you come quickly. I'm like, what the hell's going on here? So I go downstairs and there's a representative of a, I think it's Shake McToon. I think it is. Forgive my ignorance. Uh, and he said, yeah, Nice to meet you, Michael. Thank you for being here. His Excellency wanted to meet you himself, but unfortunately he's been called away on business. Uh, but he wanted me to present you on this on behalf of Dubai and say th thank you for coming to our kingdom. And I opened it up. Beautiful Rolex. I was like, holy shit, I'm coming back to Dubai, baby. I like it here. My God. Hey, that's amazing. Well done to Khabib. Unreal. What we got here? Uh, pictures of Khabib's gym. Yeah. Yeah, it's island. Jeez. But yeah, I mean, like that is you. He was literally the hero of the Muslim world. You know what I mean? Yeah. He went out there and beat the guy who's literally drinking whiskey and, and talking trash about the, the Muslim world's customs. You know, they all wanted to bless him. I mean, I'm genuinely shocked hearing that, that we got what, two more fights out of him after that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was just thinking that also representing Russia, you know? Oh, yeah. What is the what is the dominant or, or the most uh, prevalent? What's the majority in Russia? W what religion do they follow? I know there is a lot of Muslims, but are they what, what are they? Brian, just look that up. Uh, I don't think it's 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 exclusively a Muslim country. In fact, I'm pretty sure it's not. No, Russia is mostly it's a. Uh... Catholic, it's a Russian Orthodox Catholic. Yeah, I was going to say Russian Orthodox. Catholic. Yeah, yeah, I was like, I was going to say Orthodox, yeah. but then I was thinking about something else. I know nothing about religion. And then other Christians, it's six percent, and then six percent Muslims. And then what was the first percentage you said? Other Christians is going to be six percent, and then uh, six percent Muslims, and then a, a, just a grab bag of other things. Right, right, right. Ah, uh, well, no wonder we're not seeing Khabib back. He does not need to fight, uh, and neither does McGregor, right? As we know, but Michael Chandler has been staying active. He actually hit me up on Monday for an interview. God bless him. He hit me up and I wanted to get him on the show, but, uh, he wanted to do it quick because his call time was 1 PM. Um, I said, well, can we do it over Zoom? He said, I haven't got my laptop with me. I wanted to do it in person. Uh, I said, what are you in town for? He said, I'm going to the WWE tonight. And I was like, oh, shit. Oh, I see. So the UFC are doing right by you. Obviously, TKO owns the UFC and the WWE. So they're obviously keeping him busy, keeping him active. And do we have the video of Brian? Because here he was. Is it Monday Night Raw? I'm not Monday the biggest wrestling Night Raw. fan. Yeah, no, you nailed it. You're 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 a closet watcher, Mike. I know I know you're, yeah. you're sitting there ch chilling with dudes in spandex on Monday nights. Let's have a look. Look at him. Looking like the cover of Attack of the Killer Tomatoes. He was going red <laughs> as hell there. Uh, that's great to see. I, I, so I said to him, so I said, what, are we going to see you flying off the top ropes anytime soon? He said, that would be sweet. Uh, what do we know about that? I mean, because I think Michael Chandler could go straight over to the WWE. He's got the promo. He's got the look. You know what I mean? He's got the charisma and all the rest of it. I think he'd be a solid addition. And I do think it's only going to be a matter of time before we start seeing a crossover. I don't mean WWE guys coming to MMA because that's just not possible. The skill or not possible without years of training. But MMA guys like a Michael Chandler could go over there and almost immediately get involved. I mean, look at Logan Paul for crying out loud. 
Yeah, I mean, you know, it's 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 happened time and time again, you know, like dating back to to the Shamrocks, you know, like it's that there is like a a need in the WWE for like a quote unquote legit tough guy. You know, they they did a boxing tournament at one point, like a real actual boxing tournament that was part of WrestleMania. Like they they will never do that again. No, they had of uh, one of their wrestlers was a uh Bart Gunn. He was just like a form like a farm boy and he knocked out everyone legit knocked them out like brain damage <laughs> really? on paper oh my god yeah. if you go back and you watch some of those videos and you're like how did they let this happen like these dudes are actors getting their <laughs> brains <laughs> I'll tell you what, so I signed with WME, they're, they're, they're my talent agency now, mm -hmm. and they're doing a fantastic job, thank you. Uh, and th they reached out and they asked me about WWE stuff. So you got any interest in that? And I was straight away, I said, listen, I'll close line of of course I will. Sign me up. Take my money. I'm bored out of my head. I'm doing podcasts with Mike Harrington for crying out loud. <laughs> I'm like, sign me up. I'll get the spandex on. I'll do anything for a pound note. Um, yeah, Michael Chandler, though, he seems like an obvious fit for that man. He really does. Yeah, no, and I mean, like, they, I like what they did, too, because they, they had, like, a whole press thing set up with him where it's like, we're going to put Michael Chandler in a suite. If you're a VIP, come and get a picture with him. And then they let him go down and cut the promo. My first thought when I saw that was, like, the WWE had some pretty shit talkers circa 2012 to 2016. If they had just let you and Chael over there cutting promos on guys, like WWE would have been a fun product for that half a decade. Yeah, yeah. No, they're, they're, those guys are good, though. But I did sit down with uh, Callum, sorry, Lucas, last Monday. It must have been uh, Monday Night Raw, perhaps. Um, mm -hmm. Maybe it was a Monday or a Wednesday. And uh, I said, Lucas, come here, look at this. There was wrestling on. I, I wondered if it'd get his interest, and he was not. He said, This is so fake. He's not interested, but I am glad because he came to UFC 298 on Saturday because he's not really a fan. Uh, he trains MMA, but he's not a fan. But Saturday night, he loved it. He absolutely loved it being there in person. So I think I might have a little buddy when I'm sitting there watching the fights going forward. Fingers oh. crossed. Um, talking of fights and talking of fingers crossed, Jorge Masvidal is talking about coming back and trying to reclaim that BMF belt, Harrington. Uh, yeah, so the quote from Masvidal is, when I won the belt, Dana said it would be one of one Belt is done. There, w there would be no defending it. So there was never any talk about that, at least for me. But now I think the temperature on that theme has changed. They're doing things a little different, and Justin is very good. The guy that he beat to get that belt off of is an effing stud. He's a killer, Dustin Poirier. But if you put BMF against BMF, if you put me against Gaethje in there, I would break his effing orbital bone. I would effing chop him up. Hopefully that can happen at some point. Mm, interesting. Seems like Masvidal's coming back because there was a rumor recently, right? I, I don't know much about it. I forget what it was recently now, but he's talking about wanting to come back. He was even mentioning UFC 300, if memory serves me correct. Um, seems like he's getting a little bored in retirement. You know, he did get paid a lot of money when he was competing at the end of his career. Uh it's hard. You, you you retire. I know nothing about what he's up to these days. I know he's got the, the bare knuckle league. He has a nightclub apparently as well Does down he? in Miami. So, you know, uh, that can be a tough business though. Uh, seems like he wants to come back. What did you find? So I've had a lot of people DMing me uh, uh, like a video recently, and I was trying to find it to send to Brian. He's looking looking a little bit on the bigger side from from what i've seen you know like definitely not training has has not been very kind to the waistline of of bigger uh, oh so bigger in a harrington style or bigger yeah, yeah, in a yeah. Conor McGregor style no 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 this is well i mean me and connor have essentially the same build but um yeah, yeah definitely like in a in what a, a more portly kind of you know guy who wears hawaiian shirts way um and granted He's not he's not active right now. He's not a he's not a fighter. He's never a to, to get into the cage. And even when he did, there was a long part of his career where he was leaving training sessions and eating McDonald's on embedded. So, you know, who knows? But he did put out the tweet that he's unretired. I want to say it was maybe six months ago. There was talk of, mm. you know, a, a bunch of different fights for him. But man, a BMF versus BMF, the guy who put the belt around Justin Gaethje's waist, if he's able to defend against Max Holloway, the story's there. If Gaethje is not going to be able to fight Makachev for, you know, a year or nine months, whatever, however that ends up shaking out, I don't hate that.
No, no, I don't hate it at all. But uh, as you were saying there, he's looking a bit portly. I mean, the man's retired. You know, he doesn't need to be in the gym two, three days a week. He, he can afford to put on a few pounds. And I'm always reminded of a story that a friend of mine told me. And I've said it on here before, but my mind immediately went there. And I thought this was brilliant. A buddy of mine was in a hotel in Beverly Hills. And he walks into the elevator and he stops at the next floor and Lennox Lewis walks in. And Lennox Lewis walks in and he's looking all kind of round and portly, as you say, you know, put a few pounds on. And my buddy says to him, I'm going to put a few pounds on there, champ. And Lennox Lewis said to him, you will never see a skinny kink. And I thought, what a great comeback. What absolute <laughs> genius, you know what I mean? So... Yeah, fair play to Mars Vidal. Uh, before we get to questions, is there any other stories on here that are worthy? Not the Ian Gary thing, because we talked about that on Monday. Yeah, that's fine. Bilal I Muhammad, did we not talk about Bilal on Monday? Um, I think we talked a little bit about Bilal, just the, the fact his name wasn't mentioned. But, I mean, he himself had a quote on it, and he seems pretty optimistic. Yeah, well, he probably should be optimistic. He's the next man in line. I understand I why he wasn't... Selected for UFC 300. I understand why it was Hamza, Islam, and Shavkat. Just more mouth-watering matchups, if I'm honest, with more fan appeal. What do you think Bilal has to do to get that uh, that shine on him? You know, I like think he. No, no, I, I think I think he's going to get it. I think the reason, and I don't know, this is n no information, just my thought process. I think the reason they didn't ask Bilal is because it was UFC 300. And as good and as talented and as effective as Bilal Muhammad is, I just don't think it was the name that they wanted to put atop of the bill for UFC 300. And I mean that with the greatest of respect. It sounds maybe like an, an insult. Yeah, maybe an Abu Dhabi card. Maybe, maybe 301, 234, who knows? But just, you know... They were looking for that big main event, and I think they still got one. I think they got a fantastic one, but I just don't. And there's even still bitching about Pereira versus Jamal Hill. Just why? I think there would have been a bit more bitching if it was Bilal Muhammad. Do you know what I'm saying? And again, I'm not saying yeah, that. Sure. I am. It sounds like I'm criticizing Bilal. I'm not, but I don't. Th but I think it's fair to say he's not at the top of everyone's list when they think when they list favorite fighters or most exciting dynamic stars. You know what I mean? I think that's fair. I'm not saying he's not a good fighter. I'm not saying that he couldn't great. be a great champion because he could by very, very easily. You know, and I think I think he'll get matched up with Leon pretty soon. I don't know when, but it seems logical, right? Yeah, has to be. Yeah, I, w I would agree. I mean, you know, I I would assume just because of how popular he is over there that you know next time they're heading to england which i i don't see a date on the books yet but it has to be coming up soon they usually go there once in, in you know the spring slash early summertime so you know yep. save your save your, your english champion for when you go to england it makes the most sense in the world it does make the most sense in the world could you imagine that fight card leon edwards tom aspinall oof oof you will probably be calling that because i do do the english ones that'd be what a night that would be. That would be phenomenal. I'm just looking online to see if there's any breaking news. There Ooh. isn't. So I guess at this point now we'll go to questions. Big thanks to Fluffy Hernandez. Uh, what were we going to say, Harrington? You, you had that look on your face that ooh, 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 ooh. you were going to go somewhere. I put in like a three-parter story that uh, I, I oh, think God. might might have some bearing. Uh, what is it? Sneeko getting beat up. Uh, saying that he's got, you know, he, he's he's he can feel the adverse effects of getting beat up by Sean Strickland. Right. Wow. Do we have the video? Let's play the video because I want to refresh myself because I saw this the other day and I rolled my eye um, <laughs> a lot. I, if hard rolling an eye was an Olympic sport, I was doing it the other day because if he really was concussed and was feeling the effects of CTE, he wouldn't be feeling it already and you wouldn't be bragging about it, okay? Seems to me like the guy's looking for attention, but go ahead, Brian. But I'm not going to lie, bro. Like, I didn't want to stream today. I haven't left the crib. That's why I look kind of pale right now. I haven't left the crib since Thursday. So this is, this is what it looked like. I got back from that trip. Uh, Thursday, I went to the gym and then I streamed. And then Friday, I went to the gym again and I, I did some sparring training again. I, I just been, I've been sparring too much, bro. You see, I, I got the, uh, the Nate Diaz, Nick Diaz Academy hoodie on from Stockton. I, I sparred with them like, uh, like four rounds, one round with the pro, three rounds with Nate, which was like a couple days after the Strickland thing, which you guys all saw. And you saw I took some licks, took some licks. And we're going to, we're going to talk a little bit about that today. And then 
on Friday, I'm losing track of the dates, bro. Like, I, honestly, I've never had a concussion that serious, but like, I'm, I was even watching the Rocky movie and Rocky was counting the numbers on the house because they were, Rocky's really stupid and Rocky has CTE and that's kind of the whole joke. He's like, oh, Adrian, Adrian. If you don't know, Rocky is a boxing movie from the 70s. And so he's trying to buy this house. He's trying to buy a condominium to invest his money from his first fight. Oh, condominium. I never use those because he thinks it's a condom, whatever. And so he sees the numbers of the house he's supposed to buy and it adds up to nine. And I was like trying to add it up with Rocky in real time. He's like, oh, it adds up to nine. That's a good number. And I was like, it does that add up to nine? Three, three, two, 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 three, three. I was like, yeah, I might have a concussion, bro. I think something. Yeah, yeah. So, and he goes on a little bit past that as well. Uh, maybe you can't add up to nine because you're dumb. What a fucking <laughs> right? nerd. He probably just started smoking weed again, to be honest. You know, I mean, he, he, that's for attention. That's for clicks. Nobody comes out and, and, and starts parading themselves as a victim. Like, oh, I was beat up. I've definitely got a concussion. I can't add up when I used to be able to. I'm not buying that for one second. And it shouldn't be taken lightly because real fighters go out there and they do put their brain on the line every time they step in the octagon, and certainly when you have a long career, you know? Uh, so for him to be sitting there after having a couple of sparring sessions and going, oh, guys, I've got CTE, even though he didn't come out and say those words verbatimly, uh, as I, I, I kind of find it disrespectful to people that do actually have issues, if I'm honest. But he got so many internet points, Mike. Ah, well, then it was completely worth it. I mean, look, listen... It, it's his fault, right? Listen, I saw Joe Rogan as well. Do we have that video? Do we have that uh, video to play? Uh, if not, don't worry about it. But Joe Rogan was talking about it and saying, basically said, I'm paraphrasing that, you know, other fighters would have gone out there like an Israel Adesanya and took it easy on Sneeko. They would have realized he was outclassed and picked him apart and f***ed with him a little bit, which is essentially what I said, right? And then Strickland went out there and did what he did. It was kind of a dick move, right? And it kind of was, right? It was. It was kind of a dick move. You don't need to do that, but whatever. We don't need to go over it all again. But he is a grown man, and he got himself into it. Oh, here's the tape. A, a smaller-than-him streamer named Sneeko, which is not a good look, um, he beat the shit out of that guy. Yeah. It's, I just don't know why he wanted to do that. It's, it was so easy for him to beat that guy up. Well, it was fair. what we were talking about before. Yeah, it's not fair. It's just all, it's like, it's not really, there were, I mean, the kid, I don't know what that kid thought. First of all, he's so silly for doing that, for agreeing to do that with Sean Strickland. Like, because look, you know that he's never going to have that hold back. If you agree to do that with Israel Adesanya, it is, Israel Adesanya will take care of you. I swear to God. He'll, <laughs> he'll, he'll pop you a little bit and let you know that you're helpless, he, but he won't f you up. He'll smile and laugh and he'll hug you afterwards. You could spar with him. I guarantee you could spar with him. And then just touch your face just to let you know. Like you would have been knocked out, but I just touched your face. Just gonna touch you a little bit. Move around. You can't touch me. I touch you. Here's a faint and then nah, it's coming at you. <laughs> and if he's not, if he's kicking, you're f***ed. But even if he's just using his hands, if you're some, like some streamer, he wouldn't hurt you. But Sean Strickland has, you know, he's got this man code. And he, he believes yep. in it. Like, you got to get your ass kicked every now and then. And he spars all the time, spars constantly. And if you agree to get in there with him, you're essentially agreeing to l let him beat the f out of you because you don't really have a chance. Like, you have no chance. But in Sean's defense, when he lost to Alex Pajeda, one of the first things he did was go to Connecticut to Glover Teixeira's gym where Alex trains and train with him. When we was training with Alex Pajeda, yeah, we don't need to play the whole episode of the Joe Rogan podcast because uh, it'll just highlight how shit this one is. I'll cut that down a little bit. No, no, you're good. No, 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 no. You don't <laughs> have to do that, Brian. Um, yeah, he's got a good point. I just, again, I'm not ripping on Sean Strickland. You know, he, he's living his life. He's doing his thing. But it's just trying to show how badass you are against a smaller, weaker guy. I mean, what point are you proving that you can beat someone up that, that nobody – thought could beat you up i don't think okay. it's that i think it's more he's trying to just teach a lesson on a personal level i think it has less to do yeah. with his own thing and he just dislike for what this guy does and what he stands for in the world yeah no but but you could do that without potentially giving the guy cte and ruining his life and yeah, breaking but his nose or his jaw. We talked about this before already, so I don't want to go on about it too long. But there is definitely uh, other ways to do that. You know what I mean? That was just 
teeing off mercilessly against a smaller guy, you know, when you know you're better. Sneeko did have like the get away from me stiff arm at the end there. <laughs> yeah, no, hey, listen, those, those little nerds, they, 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 I mean, he asked for it. He got what he wanted at the end of the day. He sure did. Right? There's definitely that. But like, does that still mean you got to go out there and beat the guy up? Do you know what I mean? Does that make you feel any better? Does it impress anyone in the room? Right? It you were already the champion. Of, you were the champion of the world. Do you know what I mean? You want to prove you can beat Sneaker? All right, go ahead. <laughs> yep. Do you know it's, what I mean? It's more about his audience, though. Right? Yeah. Do you really want uh, 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 enough people, millions of kids who are watching this, as you said, absolute nerd, get in there with a you a guy who was the UFC champion two weeks ago and hold his own in sparring? And make it look like, yeah, oh, yeah. I mean, you don't have to let him can, hold his own. You can you can just make a fool out of him, like what Rogan said about Izzy. You can just embarrass him with skill. You know, you don't have to load up on every shot. You just don't. If, if anybody did that in a gym, right, that I was in, I, I would stop that spot if I was running the practice. If I was the guy doing that, my coach would stop me. You don't do that, even, in, even against a pro that's getting ready. You don't tee off on them like that, unless it's got really personal and like they're kind of falling out mid spar. Do you know what I'm saying? So, like, look, listen, you know, that again, he got what he what, what, what he probably wanted and expected, but you know, it's just being a bully, isn't it? At the end of the day, <laughs> it is, it is. Call it what you will, you know what I mean? And yeah, he's fighting for freedom, and you're all gonna kiss his ass and disagree with me. <laughs> but does that make you feel good going out and beating up a guy like that that's smaller? I take no satisfaction unless the guy pissed him off. You know what I mean? And, and guess, unless you have a problem with the guy, then fair enough. Go ahead. But we, that hasn't come to light, though. But maybe there is something that we don't know. But he says out loud that he has a problem with these streamers and influencers. And if he got them alone in the dark, much like Harrington, he would probably kill them. Like he said so much out loud. So it's like, why, why, as a nerd streamer, would you decide to do this <laughs> if this man has yeah. already said out loud, you know? Yeah, people. It's the modern world, though. People are just yeah. trying to make a living however they can. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, if Sean didn't have fighting, what would he be doing? At least, you know, I'm not defending this generation of people that do that for a living, but it's it's they're, they're making an honest living. They're not out there hurting people. They're not robbing people. They're not scamming people. They're not, you, you know what I mean? They're not mugging people in the street. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah, unfortunately, for a certain subsect of society, they inspire them and they think they can do that and life's going to be that easy. But they'll soon find out, just like you f around and find out you f around and think you're going to be a successful streamer and that's what you're going to do. You're going to sit on your ass and stream all day long. <laughs> There's a If you think it's tough in the fight game, trying to get to the top of that iceberg is way <laughs> harder. It's easier to be a pro fighter than what it is to stand out and be one of a million bloody influencers, a billion influencers, you know, every man and the dog. I cringe when I go on someone's profile and they have listed public figure, even if they are a public figure, I'm like, why would you have that? Why would you have that there? Harrington, have you got public figure in your thing? I don't think so. Let's, let's not. Oh check. my God. <laughs> I'm checking like, right now. If you're a public figure, the public <laughs> will know. You don't need to tell everyone that you're a public figure if you're a public figure. But then how would people just scrolling by know that I'm important, Mike? Well, exactly. <laughs> uh, how, how can I flex to my followers uh, or to someone that doesn't follow? Them? Whoa, whoa, I was just going to breathe a scroll on by. This guy's a public figure. So Holy I, shit. I, all right. To defend myself a little bit, if I do have it, it's because you have you do to do have that. It. Oh, God. I, I, Brian, how did, I had no idea that you had that. You have to do it to, to create like a business account. You I know what I mean? So that you can pay you for advertising as well. Because there's I'm another not, one. Not yet. Not yet. But, you know, who knows, In dude? defense, you, I don't see public figure on his Instagram. Oh, thank God. Oh. I just doubted myself for no reason. <laughs> <laughs> No, but you know what I mean? Like, like the, the life coaches as well. They're as bad mm -hmm. as, they're worse than the public figures, Harrington. Ooh, that makes dude, feel bad. I saw one and I, I, I wanted to put it in the notes so bad. The, this is a wild life coach, right? It's a woman who's making $4 million a year as a proofreader. She had a, 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 a eight story mansion in Orlando. She said, that's it. I'm selling it. I don't want to live here anymore. Big empty house. Husband divorced her. She went and got a Sprinter van. She lives out of a, a custom Mercedes Sprinter van. She put like a hundred grand into it, drives from town to town, said she lives on 30 to $40 a day and makes her living as a life coach remotely. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. But hold on a minute. See, there's a woman. She lived in a $4 million mansion. She she had a $4 million a year job. I think the mansion itself is, yeah, the mansion is also worth $4 million. Yeah. Well, well, then she's got every right to coach people's lives. I don't have a, an issue with that, you know? And then she's living in a sprinter van, surviving off $30, 40 day, uh, dollars a day. Some people need coaching in how to do that. Some people don't have a lot of money. You know what I'm saying, Brian? It's an $80,000 sprinter van. It's probably pretty nice yeah yeah no exactly well sprinter vans are around that mark anyway and then when you custom them out it's going to be even more but that person does have a right that they've they've made a lot of money they've been successful and they've got something to try and pass on to other people knowledge life coach skills i'm talking about these life coaches it's a 21 year old girl still living at home with her mom and dad <laughs> you know what i mean and they're gonna life coach what are you gonna coach me on sponging off your mom and dad and doing all and amounting to nothing Fitness coach, shut up, get out of it. Do you know what I mean? So yeah, them ones get in the ray in the ring with Strickland. Let him tee off on you. Today's episode is brought to you by Eight Sleep, the high tech solution to your age old sleeping issues. Eight Sleep's pod cover slips right over your mattress, bringing heating and cooling technology that keeps you comfortable and sleeping deeper for a better, more restful night. Listen, eight sleeps pod cover. It's unreal, right? This is like a little mattress cover and you can cool or warm both sides of the bed. If you want one side warm, cool. You want one side cool, that's also cool. In fact, you can go as low as 55 degrees on one side of the bed and up to a whopping 110 degrees on the other side of the bed if you're a cycle, like my wife. This is solving a lot of problems in our house, okay? It's always too warm. It's always too hot. I'm always bitching about this room because the heating's always on. Well, that still continues at night, certainly in winter. And when summer comes, oh, baby, you're going to be sleeping fantastically, Look, listen, at night, your body needs to go to the perfect temperature. The pod also attracts your sleep and the health metrics. On average, pod users see their sleep quality improve by 32%. As I said, the pod cover improves your sleep by automatically adjusting your bed's temperature on your individual needs. The cover can be added to any bed just like a fitted sheet and allows you and your partner to cool or warm your side of the bed to as low as 55 and as high as 110 degrees. Why do you love eight sleep? Well, I'll tell you right now. Okay, I love it because it's making me sleep like an absolute baby and me and Rebecca aren't clashing at night. Okay, go to eightsleep.com slash Bisping and you can get $200 off plus free shipping. Okay, this is a fantastic product. I stand by it. I really, really love this thing. And it will revolutionize your sleeping. You're going to sleep better and deeper, and you're going to be cool, and you're going to hit the perfect temperature. 8sleep.com slash Bisping. You're going to get $200 off and free shipping. Okay, give it a try. You won't be disappointed. Anyway, uh, if you have a question, please send it in to bympod at gmail.com. Don't worry, Monday. Um... Anthony Smith is going to be back, okay? All normalcy will resume. We've got some deep, in-depth conversations. But if you have a question, send it in, bwampod at gmail.com. And if you're listening on Spotify or wherever you find podcasts, make sure to subscribe. Leave us a five-star rating, positive review. It really helps us out on those platforms. If you're watching on YouTube, make sure to subscribe to the channel and you hit that notification bell to find out whenever a new video drops. And if you want to catch over 500 episodes you can't find it anywhere else, completely ad-free and totally uncensored, head to gasdigital.com. Use the promo code BYM. Get a seven-day free trial. Check out over 20 great shows on the network. Hold on, Brian. Before you get into that, let, let me just, I just, while, while you did that, let me just Google this. Yeah, no worries. What? is a life coach. Let's see what the actual <laughs> parameters of being a life coach is. Oh, I literally Googled that right before we went to questions. <laughs> and, and what is it? What, it? what did it say? Because I've just got a bunch of ads at my end. It shows oh, you how life. popular this life coach phenomenon is. Find a life coach near you. Life coach tailored to you. Support all life's hurdles. A life coach is someone who counsels and encourages cl encourages clients through personal or career challenges. A life coach helps guide clients to reach their ultimate goals. A life coach can help individuals in different areas of their life because each human being is different. So it's it's basically a hired friend. Yeah. No. 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 See, that sounds like a service though, which will be very, very valuable, right, to a lot of people, and that's great. If you're qualified to do that, it's not necessarily life coaches that I have an issue with. It's a problem with public figures, wannabe life coaches, 
and uh, streamers that 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 are nobody. Anyway, I'd like to announce well, my new business. Uh, no. I'm gonna be a personal life coach. You can <laughs> no, no, never mind. Well, you're a public figure, Brian. Uh, <laughs> <first question? laughs> All right, first question here we got is from Jake Zakowski. Bro, this is like my ninth time recording this because every time I keep stuttering and it sounds so stupid. Anyways, BYM, Jake here from Pennsylvania with another question. My question uh, for you guys is about UFC matchmaking and stuff. 300 got announced, Alex versus Jamal. I'm hype. I'm ready. I can't wait to see somebody. It's going to be a great fight. It's going to be crazy. It's going to be wild. Barn burner. But anyways, my question is, what is a fight that the UFC has made that made you guys shit yourself? That you guys were just like, holy shit, I cannot wait for this fight to happen. Uh, hell yeah. And it can't be your own fight. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you, Jake. While I think Harrison is the one that springs to mind for you, I guess, mm -hmm. in fact, one that is an old school one. I remember when Chuck Liddell was matched up with Vandalay Silva. When I heard that, I was like, oh, man, this is going to be brilliant. Uh, and the fight was, but yeah, obviously Vanderlei was the man back in the day in Pride, came over to the UFC, Chuck Liddell was the longtime champion. They kind of both kind of fallen from their lofty perches by the time they fought, but the fight still lived up to expectation. Yeah, I'm trying to think. I think like the holy shit moments are typically like the short term replacement. So recently when uh, when you had Islam stepping in to fight Volkanovsky on seven days notice, it was like, whoa, um, you know, I know they said we can't. It's not my fight. So I'm going to say when you got booked against Rockhold, it was like, dude, who saw that one? You know, like those are the fights where immediately my brain goes, all right, I'm locked in. I'm super excited. But I don't know. I think maybe the number one, maybe the number one all time. When they announced Brock Lesnar at UFC 199, when they were like, oh, by the way, next month, we got Brock Lesnar coming back. I was like, what? Well, Harrington just stole mine. So my close oh. second <laughs> is when they announced, and this is this gives me a sad face, but when they announced uh, Tony versus Khabib, I was mm. extremely hyped. And, what about uh, the second time? Yeah, man, less hyped. <laughs> what about <laughs> the third time? Not hyped at all. <laughs> not fourth time? <laughs> I gave up and hope. What about the fifth time? <laughs> oh, I was back in by the fifth. Five times. <laughs> it couldn't have not happened the fifth time. <laughs> yeah, the five, five times, you're like, shut up. I don't care anymore. Pretty much. Uh, thank you, Jake. What else we got, Bri? All right. Oh, so the next question we have here is from Matt Tabor. Hey, BYM crew. Matt coming to you from upstate New York. I have two questions for you today. The first is, uh, with the inclusion of Vandalay Silva into the UFC Hall of Fame, do you believe any other pride fighters will make it over, such as uh, Fedor or Crow Cop? And my second question is, Mike, would you ever have Eddie Bravo on as a co-host or guest? I think Eddie is one of the funniest guys in the MMA community, and uh, it would be a great addition to the show. Thank you, and have a great day. Oh, one last thing. Thank you, Harrington. Um, thank you for the question. Not against Eddie Bravo in the slightest. Uh, it'd be a funny conversation hearing him and Brian, you know. I'd love to talk to Eddie minute. Bravo. Yeah. Well, you don't need to speak to Eddie Bravo. You can just go into any conspiracy corner online and basically get fed the same information. Yep. Him, Bryce Mitchell, you know, Brian, you know. Uh, I saw Bryce Mitchell the other day. The earth is flat. It's still going on. He's like, I, the earth, I don't think the earth is flat. I know the earth is flat and so on and so forth. Uh -huh. so, um, <laughs> didn't we have Eddie Bravo on like super far back in the day? I think we did. I'm pretty sure you guys also argued about the earth being flat. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thinking. Well, we would have done because that would have been the first thing I went to that and the camp trails and all the rest of it. Uh, pride fighters, yeah. pride fighters. I think, well, the guy was in the, in the hall of fame. Obviously he's one that springs to mind straight away crow cop that's an interesting one yeah because he's not in the hall of fame he had a good little run in the ufc yeah, that sounds like really condescending it's, it wasn't intended to be uh crow cop absolute legend of the game didn't really pan out you know he didn't fulfill his potential if you will if he was like his best days let me just look him up how many fights did he have in the UFC? I remember him getting knocked out against uh, 
Frank Mir and Gabriel Gonzaga, which shouldn't be the two fights that spring to mind when you think about his legendary career because he was the absolute man. Uh, just here we go. So UFC, UFC made his UFC debut against Mustafa Alter, knocked him out, lost by a TKO to Dos Santos, beat Anthony Parosh in Sydney, Australia. I fought on that card, beat Pat Barry via rear naked choke. Then he lost to Frank Mir, all by knockout, Frank Mir, Brendan Sharp, and Roy Nelson. And that was that. That was his time in the UFC. So, yeah, I think it's fair to say he never really panned out and lived up to his reputation in the UFC. But I think pre-UFC, what he did in Pride, the wars that he had there, let's remember he got knocked out against Czech, uh, sorry, Gabriel Gonzaga. And Czech. Lost to Czech Congo. No contest to Alistair Overeem. So he had a fair few fights, but... The, the, the wars that he had in pride. I, I'd have no issue with that one little bit. Any other pride fighters that you're thinking of? Well, I'm thinking like, you know, it's tough because a lot of them did have, you know, storied UFC careers to the point where they're going to get in based on that. So like your rampages and your showguns. Um, I don't know. Uh, Sakuraba's already in there. Um, I don't know. I mean, I guess is Takanori Gomi's not in, is he? I think Rampage is a good call. Rampage yeah, I can see Rampage being in the Hall of Fame. You know, I trained with Rampage. He inspired me a lot. He's a great human being. Um, and he was incredible. He had some, he was a champion, knocked out Chuck Liddell. He never defended the belt. He lost first defense to uh, Forrest Griffin, but he was a force of nature, man. And he's an absolutely hilarious individual as well. So I don't know. I wouldn't have an issue with Rampage. Not one little bit. Uh, do we have one more, Brian? We sure do. This one here is from Mr. Matt Kerr. Hey guys, Matt from Toledo here. Just wanted to get your thoughts on what Max should do if he goes out there and beats Justin. Should he go back down and fight Ilya? That's what most people are saying. But what does that do for his run at lightweight? If he beats the number two guy in spectacular fashion, don't you think him versus Islam could be pretty cool? Uh, we never got the Max versus Khabib fight. So I'm thinking that this is kind of the next best thing. And maybe Islam would be more down to stand with Max. I think it'd be pretty cool. And I think it could be competitive, especially because we haven't seen like a older mid thirties Max at lightweight. What do you guys think? Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, it's an interesting point because if you beat Justin Gagey, then yeah, of course, that would put you right in place after Charles Oliveira and Sarukian, whoever wins that. It sounds logical. However, um, I just don't think Islam would be a good matchup. I think he's best suited at 145. He spent all of his career there. He's certainly one of the best. And with Elia Taporia being the champion now, that certainly opens up some possibilities. I think against Islam Makachev, Islam's a professional. He's going to take the easiest path to victory, which would be using his wrestling, right? He wouldn't choose to stand with Max just simply because Max is going to try and stand with him. You know, he's going to get taken down overpowered, probably out-wrestled. But it's mixed martial arts, you never know. But for what I said, Ilya being the champ now, uh, going down to 145 as the BMF title holder and challenging for 145. But he could do whatever he wants. What do I know? What do I know? But yeah, that would be my answer. Well, I mean, I'm just wondering if he's already plugged in um it's already plugged in like the winner of bmf is it's a it's a short shot to a title at 155 wouldn't i i'm i'm of a mind i think that the the path to a title at 155 might be shorter than the path to a title at 145 given just how much Ilya says he has no interest in fighting max holloway yeah but that doesn't matter yep. if the rematch with volkanovsky goes ahead it's max next max has beaten everybody the path might be shorter at 155 not that i necessarily agree but just to use your point what is the path he's beaten everybody the only person that he hasn't beaten right now that's on a run is movsar ivlowev Outside of that, Max Holloway has beaten all the other top contenders. He's pushed them all away. And the only one that he hasn't fought is Ilya Taporia. Right? Of course, he lost to Volkanovski, but outside of that, yeah, he, he, he was the next best. So anyway, that's the answer. And that is the show. We'll be back on Monday with another episode. Thank you for watching. Thank you for supporting the show. Subscribe and ring the bell if you haven't done so. And enjoy the weekend.